Hello, welcome to uh, fraction number five of Nigeria 2025 Federal Mathematics. This is on the histogram. We have the table shows the distribution of weights, which is in newtons of 100 donuts. That's blood donuts. So we have the weights. The interval are given which is an even interval. We are to draw a histogram for this distribution. I've already constructed a table that will be needed for drawing of the histogram. The first thing to do is to repeat your values of what? The weight. Then we have the donuts, which is going to be the frequency. You can see F. We need the class boundary. If this were to be equal interval, we are going to base on the class boundary and draw our histogram. But because it is having different class interval, we need class size. And how do we get a class size? Even here, how do we get a class boundary? We find the difference between the upper class limit of the first class and the lower class limit of the next one. Meaning difference between 60 and what? 59, that is one. Half of that, that will give you 0 0.5. So you take away 0 0.5 from all the lower limits and add it to all the upper limits. We can see from here. 55 minus 0 0.5 gives you 54.5. Then we add the 0 0.5 here, give you 59.5. We apply it to all of them. All right, then the next thing is to find the class size. The class size is also the difference between the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary of a particular class, by a particular class interval. So if I pick this is the class interval, this is a class boundary. So 59.5 minus 54.5 will give you what? 5. Then 65.5 minus 59.5 also give you what? 6. So you can see this is not equal. This is why we are going to include the next column, which is what? Frequency density. The frequency divided by the class size give you the frequency word, density. And how do we get that? So 18 divided by 5 will give you this. We can get two decimal places. But I want to go for one decimal place. 5 divided by 6, you get this. 20 divided by 6, 3.3. 22 divided by 7, 27 divided by 8, and 8 divided by 4. Give you your frequency density. So we are going to plot the frequency density on the y-axis. Then we are going to indicate the lower class boundary with their respective class interval on the y-axis. Sorry, on the x one axis. So now let's transfer this point we have onto the graph and see how well we can easily work, plot uh, our histogram. Okay, so now in Plotting this, remember we have only six bars to draw. We are going to place our y axis here or here. Let's see if it is clean here. We can get all the values that we need. We need uh, starting from the point we have. The first thing I am looking for is the lower limit here, which is going to be 54.5. I need at the beginning of the point. Then I am going to end up to 90.5 or 90 point something. That is a bit bigger than what? 90.5. So let's see how well we can do that. Let's see. Then the next is to locate our our x axis also here. Remember the location of it is determined by the interval given in the question. I can see the interval on the on the y axis, which is making use of the frequency density, is from two as a point we have to uh, the value of three point four being the highest. So since it's three point four. If I use one, two, three, four, you can see the graph is going to be half of the graph paper. We need the graph to be more than half. So I'll change the scale from one 
to 0 0.5. So if I have 0 here, the first point will be 0 0.5. If we add 0 0.5, it will be 1.0. In that order, 1.5, and I can have what? 4.0 here. So this is your y axis, and we are dealing with uh, frequency density. So your frequency density is here. We are going to begin, as I mentioned, with the lower class limit, which is 54.5. What will be the next value? If we're to have an equal interval, I will just move ahead and indicate all the class boundaries. But here we are having different class size. So the first class size is giving us what? Five. It means that from the first one to the next one has an interval of five. So I can move, say that two decimal, uh, two centimeters to five minutes. This is two centimeters to five minutes. So I'm going to add five to this value. If you add five, it becomes 59.5. If you add 5 to uh, 54.5, you should get 59.5. So the interval we use was 5 for this. Remember, there's a design 2 cm already. So let's focus on that 2 cm and add 5, 5, since from here to here is 5, to make the scale be uh, the same, uniform. Let's add 5, 5. So if I add 5 to 59.5, it will give you 64.5. Let's add 5. We still have 69.5. We still have 74.5. 79.5. We have 80. 9.5 and adding 5 to this will give you 94.5. So these are the values. But can you see that from the origin is 0 to this? If you add 5 to 0, you'll be getting what? 5. But you're having 54.5, which means the scale does not include the first part. So I'm going to break it down. So this sign means that that part of the graph is what? Broken is not part of the scale that I am going to apply. All right, now what do we do? Let's go and pick the values. I am picking the 54.5 to 59.5 with the class uh, frequency density of what? 3.4. So I'm going straight forward on this axis, locate 3.4. This is going to be. I have three, is it? No, 3.6. 3.6. So from here, we are having 3.5. So I need extra one added to it. With here, each of the two units is going to give you 0 0.1. Uh, I think 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So if I add 0 0.1 to this, I should be having 3.6, which is here. So I am locating 3.6 here. It is always good to shade. The shading gives you visibility of the bars. It makes the bar visible on the graph. So you shade nicely to demarcate each of the bar. So we move to the second bar, which is also starting from, see where it is starting from, all the way from uh, 59.5, ending as what? Well, 65.5 with an interval of six. So I am not going to move exactly using the box because this box is an interval of five. So I need extra one added to it. And that extra one is going to be one plus 64.5 will become 65.5. If you add one to it, you get 65.5 here. So your bar is going to be a lot bigger I am only going to put the demarcation first. Then I look at the frequency density. Good. Now let's find the frequency density that this interval is going for, which is what? 0 
and 0 0.8 is a lot smaller than 1. So I have 0 0.5 here, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So I will have my graph drawn to this level. So that becomes the second bar that we have. The third one, we can see it is also beginning from 65.5. So no need to leave any space. So 65.5, I am going all the way to 71.5 with an interval of what? Six. So I need to add six. Already I have taken one from the five. So let me four. If I add one, that will make it what? Uh, five. If I add the next one, that will make it six. So I'm adding two to 69.5 to become 71.5. So I'm going to one, two. Not two lines, but four lines. Let me just demarcate before we look at for the frequency density. What is the frequency density we are working with? We are working with what? 3.3. So I'm going to count 3.3. 3 is here. So on the line, this is the line. So I have 3 here. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So I'm going to cap my diagram here. Bring it down. Okay. We are moving to the third uh, aspect, 71.5 all the way to 78.5 with an interval of 7. So let's see if we can get a 7. I can still count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I get my 7 all the way here, I can see if I draw this line, it should be one away from 79.5 and exactly that is what I have. What is a frequency density? That is going to be 3.1. So 3.1, I have 3 on this bar, where am I? 3.1. So let me extend this line. So the next one is going for 78.5 to 86.5 with the interval of what? 8. With the interval of what? 8. So let's go. With this one space, making it, this will be 6. So 7, 8. Remember, every two lines you give one unit. So if that is 8, well, we are adding 2 to 84. That will make it 86, right? The end 86. So we are ending the point here. A lot bigger. So let's check the frequency density, which will be 3.4. The highest so far. So 3.4. Okay, so the last one we have will be interval of what? 2, which is from 86.5 to 90.5. 86.5, the interval is 4, rather. The class size is 4. So I have, I just need to add uh, 1, right? If I add 1 here, I'll get 80. 89.1 is what? 90.5. So 1, 2, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Exactly. So we are going to have up to the class frequency density is 2. Let's move all the way to 2. Okay, so if we check, we can see that the, the size of each bar is different based on the class uh, size given to us. This is, if you check all, the 8 class size is bigger than the 7, the 6, 6, 5, and 1, 4. 
So this brings the difference between the class size that have equal intervals and the ones that have what? An equal interval. So I think when I posted a video first, I did it on equal class interval. And I got to realize that it is having an equal. So here is the follow-up to that video, even though it's been deleted. So this is what we have. There's a question I can also ask for those in the UK as in asking for the area of each bar. If you're asked to find the area, the area of each bar is actually the frequency. The frequency itself. You see, the first frequency is what? 18. Then, if you find the class size here, multiply by the 3.6, you go back to 18. So you get the length of this multiplied by this, which is actually the total frequency. Because it was uh, frequency density equals to frequency over class size. So you see, if you cross multiply, your frequency will be equal to the frequency density times what? The class size. So that is just for those of us who are watching from UK. This is done. We need to give a title to it. So this, we can pick a title as in from the question. We are having a, a graph shows distribution of what? Width. That alone can be our title. So I can say that title. So the title will be the graph. You can pick the title from the function. Then we need to give the scale that we use. What scale have we used? You can see on the x-axis, every 2 cm is what? 5 mm. And let's see on the y-axis, every 2 cm is what? Uh, 0 0.5. So let's see, 2 cm to 5 units on x-axis, then 2 cm to 0 0.5 units on the y word axis. So this is the scale and the title. Well word perfected. I guess you've gotten all the clues that you need uh, to answer questions of this nature.